it's extremely safe, fairly affordable, and one of the last off-road wagons that you can buy for 2025. Welcome back! Or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous, and that's the 2025 Subaru Outback. But more specifically, it's a premium trim level and a really nice red shade of paint that Subaru likes to call Crimson Red Pearl, and it's also assumed to be the last year of this sixth generation of the Outback. So today I get to share the good, the bad, and the ugly of this last year's Subaru Outback to help you guys decide at home if this might be the right vehicle for you. So you can expect to see a walk around, all the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60 on GPS, and then my final thoughts and huge thanks to the Twin Falls Subaru for letting me borrow this one for the day. I'll link them below if you're interested. Everything they sell is below MSRP and they ship all over the country. And with that said, let's dive right into this review. And if you like Subaru, the Outback, or my video, please consider liking my video. That small act of kindness, it actually goes a long way. It helps me know you want to see more stuff like this, but it will also help you by having YouTube choose to show you more stuff like this that you maybe didn't know already existed. Thank you guys. So if you are new to Subaru, or more specifically the Outback, there's a few things that you really need to know. The first generation of Outback came out back in 1995, so it's been 30 years of us in America having access to the Subaru Outback. But the front half of this is the Subaru Legacy, which is one generation ahead of this. But Subaru basically extended it, raised it up, and lifted the whole thing to make it an Outback, and these have been pretty popular ever since. They sell between 140,000 and 180,000 units in North America alone, but they're also sold in Canada and a few other countries. The ones for the North American market, where I currently am, are made or assembled in Lafayette, Indiana. A few of the other Subaru models are actually made in Japan still and then shipped overseas, but these are homegrown. They're made in America, and they're pretty darn popular. And we have had confirmation that the Subaru Legacy Sedan, which only sells in the 20,000 unit ballpark every single year, it's being terminated. It's going extinct or taken out to pasture. It will no longer be sold after 2025. So if you really want the sedan version of this, now's your last chance to get one. But I'm really hopeful that with the sedan going away, Subaru might have the option, might have the capacity to shave off the rear quarter on the top and turn this into a Subaru Baja like we had about 20 years ago. And what I find really fascinating is this is a 2025 model year, but Subaru of North America's website does not even show the 2025s yet. They still show that you can build a 2024, which makes no sense to me, and maybe by the time that this video is posted, they will have changed that. But I don't quite understand because this vehicle wasn't built yesterday, it was probably built at least a couple weeks ago, so I'm surprised that they haven't updated the system yet. But if you are wondering, there should be nine trim levels of the Outback, starting with the base and being the most loaded out with the Touring XT. And to be expected for this new year, the base model should start at about $30,000. This premium started at about $31,000. But after you tack on any extra goodies and maybe about $1,300 of destination, it's almost a $34,000 vehicle. This one is discounted a little bit by the dealership, but that's about what you can pay for a fairly loaded out premium. There are more optional packages you can have. For instance, when you're gonna buy the base model, you get a few pretty good options. You get a 10-way power driver seat. That is a cloth seat. They're heated. You have the 11.6 inch screen and dual climate controls. You also have all of the Starlink features if you want access to those. But because this didn't have all the premium options or all of the optional packages as they're called, it actually has a physical key just like the base model which I found kind of interesting because I think every other premium level Subaru that I've ever driven before came with the proximity key feature, whether because that was standard equipment or because that was how it came with the optional package. So I honestly find the way that Subaru configured this premium with its options kind of interesting because you'll notice you have really nice chrome around the windows, which chrome is not my favorite feature, but on this it actually looks pretty good and it complements the chrome badging or the silver badging, the silver wheels, the silver Outback quite well. And this even has the turn signals and a little bit more chrome on the side mirror caps. So it's interesting that this one doesn't get proximity key features or the proximity key in general, it has a physical key, but you have some other higher end features that are usually found on higher trim levels and not the premium, especially when you don't have all those options loaded out But on people it. really like their Outbacks for a number of reasons. Just look at how compact it is and how well it fits in this parking space. For being about 16 feet long and having a nine foot wheelbase, it really offers quite a lot. These are around five and a half feet tall, roughly six feet wide, and they weigh up to about 3,900 pounds if you have a loaded out heavy turbo model. But one like this might be a couple hundred pounds less. 
And then it has a payload capacity of 900 pounds, which seems to be what all four-door Subarus are rated. It has the standard symmetrical all-wheel drive and the Subaru Global Platform, meaning it has a 370 final drive ratio and about 8.7 inches of ground clearance. And it can do a full circle in about 36 feet. And the last three things to mention here is the gas door is located right there on the passenger side. When you lock the vehicle, the gas door locks, thankfully, so the bums can't steal any of your 18 and a half gallons of gas. And then it easily unlocks when you unlock the vehicle. This only needs 87 octane premium. And when you're getting about 26 on the city, maybe 32 on the highway, your max road trip and range is just shy of 600 miles. And then it has a Yokohama Adva GT tire. Unfortunately, there's only about 8 30 seconds of tread depth from what I measured. So not as much as some other vehicles and some other tires, but it's a 225, 65, 17. And I really appreciate that there's a lot of sidewall on this and not too big of a wheel. So you're less likely to scratch your wheel on the curb or off-roading and you're gonna have a little bit squishier ride with all that sidewall. So good job Subaru for that. But as mentioned earlier, it's a physical key, which some of you guys actually might prefer. But you have unlock, lock, just release of the hatch, which doesn't do a power lift gate on this one, and then panic button. So you're gonna either have to push the button or use the physical key to get yourself access to this vehicle. The driver's side door panel looks really good, but it's a lot of gray and black materials. Thankfully, they're all soft touch, but there really is quite the variety of textures, of feelings, but thankfully, you know, it all works out. This is basically the same armrest from my Outback Wilderness and it's comfortable. You have an unnamed speaker. You have a bottle holder, some snacks. You have the medium sized 3D printed Subaru on the door sill right there. Arborized mats and pedals. You have the hood release, the fuse box. You have lighting right there. Ventilation, trip reset, lighting stock. And then this is your 10 way power adjusted cloth heated seat and no power moonroof up top. You're gonna have to spend a little bit more money if you want that option. But when you're sitting inside the premium, it actually does feel like a pretty premium place to be. Armrest comfort, as mentioned, it's good. Everything is within access, easy to reach, and you even get a leather wrapped wheel on this one. You have voice and volume controls on the left with your info button to go through the center display. You have adaptive cruise features right here, and you still have the paddle shifters on the back of this generation of Outback. But when you fire right up, remember you're gonna need the key. You don't just have the push button start like you do on a lot of the other models. So get that thing going, fire it up, the needles dance, the Basic heads up display those, if you can see the reflection right there, those lights just let you know what's going on if you're in cruise control, if you're in a warning zone, or if you're in red, like something's about to crash. But overall, you know, it's nice. There's a few display features you can see even on the space model. The horn, it's loud, it's high pitch. It's a Subaru part spin horn. And then this is your 11.6 inch display, which really isn't missing anything other than navigation on this model. I like to turn auto start stop off though when I get in the vehicle. Otherwise, you have an electronic parking brake down there. That should turn off if you start driving, if you forget to turn it off. The system's tuned to know to shut that off. At least that's been my experience. And then you have some plugins, an aux port, a nice storage space. Personally, I had the wireless charger on mine and I took it out and I bought these tray pieces to replace it with because I didn't think it worked on my phone. Otherwise, the reverse camera, uh, it's a little bit grainy. You can tell what's going on, but it could definitely be better for the year 2025. And then you can get into X mode either through when it's in reverse right there up at the top. It has stage one X mode or you can should be able to just go over and get that. Yep, right there. Otherwise, you have some cup holders and you have a two stage center console that does have a 12 volt plug in in there. Oops, it didn't want to drop. There we go. Otherwise, up top, this does have the optional package for the auto dimming mirror with home link for your garage doors and the compass. You have glasses storage, LED lighting and some incandescent lighting right there, and it does slide, which is a nice feature. With that said, let's turn it off and we'll hop in the back. The back of the Subaru Outback is where this thing really shines. Of course, the door panel, it just looks like the same design language as the front, nothing to really talk about here. But the back seat bench is really nice. You do have some grip to get into it in case you have to get up to those factory rails that you can do as crossbars too. They're not as heavy duty as some of the other Outbacks like the Wilderness, but they do the job for lightweight stuff. So this is the back bench. This is the 40 split. That's the 60 split. And as you can see, they can all recline. That's about as much reclination as you can get on this one. And then this has the child safety latches down there, which make it really easy for car seats. But otherwise, it's a nice big place to be. If I sit behind my driver position at five foot 11 with the seat recline, I have that much room in front of my knees. I have ventilation, which actually feels adequate. I have some lighting. I even have some cup holders and an armrest right here. 
and it's sturdy enough. So just sitting back here, you can see why people love the Outbacks, whether you're in the front seat or you're in the back. It's just a nice, comfortable place to be. And with that said, let's hop out and I'll show you the hatch. The back of the Outback, I think, looks pretty good, but there's really only two ways to access your hatch cargo capacity. You can either climb through the back seats or you're gonna have to lift it with the button that's underneath the Subaru emblem. But notice on this premium, the way it's spec, there's no pin code to get private access to your vehicle without the keys on you. You probably need the proximity key for that. But otherwise, it lifts pretty easily. Back here, you have a little bit over 30 cubic feet of cargo capacity. You even have these handles to drop the seat and they work really well under most circumstances. When you drop the seats, you have closer to 74 cubic cargo capacity. You have bag clips that pop out. You can see there's some blanks there from higher trim levels. Storage behind the wheel well, another little tie down on each corner, a mesh pocket behind the passenger side, and then you have your temporary spare tire. And all of its tools down here, you can see the groove right there. That's for the privacy shade if you want to get rid of that. That's personally what I did with my Outback. And then you have the spare tire down there. So overall, it's a pretty nice place to be. And for being a 16 foot long vehicle, you really have a lot of room. And then overall, it's not too difficult, I'd say, to reach up to grab the hatch and to throw it back And down. if you're the lucky duck that gets to ride shotgun in the Outback, door panel, again, not really much to talk about. You still have the same Subaru on the door sill. No power seat, you just can recline here. You can slide it forward with the bar. All weather mat again, which is a factory option with the premium. You have storage right here, storage up here, and a decent sized lockable glove box with the key. You have a 12 volt right there, but the rest of the glove box, it's really not that big, especially for how huge the Subaru manual is. But with that said, let's come around to the front, let's pop the hood, and we'll talk about the two and a half liter Boxster power plant that this Outback has to offer. Under the hood, you have the two and a half liter Boxster engine, which is naturally aspirated. There's no supercharger, no turbo. So it makes 182 horsepower, about 5,800 RPM. So you really have to rev it out to get to the power band. And then it makes about 176 foot pound feet of torque at 4,400 RPM, which is pretty average for a naturally aspirated vehicle. But keep in mind, if you do opt for a turbo version of the Outback, you get 277 torque at 2,000 RPM. So basically at the same 2,000 RPM, it would probably be over the torque that this one puts out, but this one does okay around town. You have ventilation through the grill, the air filter in the box, the piping, the plumbing, the throttle body, the intake runners, and then everything else is pretty easy to identify. Fuse boxes on the periphery. You have all of your reservoirs, your oil filter, your oil fill, your alternator. Because it's a rear wheel drive setup for the all wheel drive system basically, it's a front facing engine. So you have the serpentine belt right there, easy to change because it's right in front of your face. Otherwise, all of your reservoirs, your battery right there at the positive and negative terminal. And honestly, most of the stuff on here is very mechanical, very easy to identify. There's not a bunch of ugliness and confusing wires and tubes and coolant hoses and stuff that's not well designed. It's basically pretty easy to follow exactly what's going on in this platform. And for that reason, I really like Subarus. I really like being a Subaru owner because it's easy to do a lot of the maintenance. But let's drop the hood and take it for a drive. Initial driving impressions of the 2025 Subaru Outback Premium is right off the bat, it drives really well. It feels smooth on the road with a nine foot wheelbase. It's not too bumpy of a ride. You have a lot of sidewall with the wheels. Visibility is fantastic. The A pillar and the B pillar really aren't that wide and for anything else, just use the side mirrors. And even at 16 feet long, the rear view mirror feels like it goes right down the center. Of course, you can get the digital rear view mirror if you have a higher trim level like the Touring. But just driving this, it's easy to find a comfortable position. If I would stop talking for a moment, it gets pretty quiet in here. It's actually insulated pretty well, but the trees aren't dancing around too much. We don't have a ton of excessive wind noise, and these Advent GT tires really don't kick up a lot of rocks. But I really like the driving experience of this. Having owned an Outback for almost three years, that's actually the longest I have owned any vehicle because these are so good, it's hard to beat one. And other than, you know, or once I, I should say, once I get my driving seat positioned how I like it to be a little bit more upright, I actually feel just like I'm driving my Outback Wilderness. The only difference that I would be able to detect from the driver's seat is when I put my foot down, the two and a half liter engine, it gets you up to speed, but it doesn't get you up to speed in a hurry. And keep in mind, the vehicle's loaded with nothing right now. This could hold 900 pounds. So if you have 900 pounds of people and you're going up a mountain pass like in Colorado, you're probably gonna be struggling. The CVT is probably gonna be holding a pretty high RPM with the engine. And just know that you're not gonna have nearly as easy of a driving experience as a turbo model. But if you're at sea level, 
you know, if you're not driving this low to down, towing anything, it's gonna do completely fine. It's comfortable in here, the seats are good. I like super cloth seats, especially because they're comfortable and they're not very wide, so they really don't take up a lot of the interior volume of this vehicle's cabin. There's a little bit of a bump right here. Let's see how we do going 50 miles an hour. Yeah, nothing, nothing abrupt, no sharp sounds. And my bum doesn't hurt after that bump. So with that said, let's get to the private road. We'll do a zero to 60 and then we'll wrap this up with my final thoughts. Zero to 60 in the 2025 Subaru Outback. Keep in mind density altitude is 6,000 feet above sea level. So we're actually down on power about 20% today. Traction's off, brake rev, let's go. zero to 60 came in at 9.76 seconds not surprising given how hot it is and with our elevation today let's get to my final thoughts ultimately keep in perspective the context of this all i'm just a random guy who makes a couple car videos on youtube a few times a week as a part-time gig because i love cars i love driving them i like to experience them and more than anything i like to share them with you guys so my final thoughts on the subaru outback for 2025 it's assumed to be the last year of this generation and these are really refined. Subaru has done a better job with every generation, with every new year, to make this just a little bit better vehicle. And a lot of the bugs, a lot of the kinks are worked out. Like I mentioned earlier, I've owned my Outback Wilderness for almost three years. I've traded around vehicles a lot just because I like to experience new things. I also drive a lot, so I put a lot of miles on them, and that's kind of the justification. But I also value driving safe cars, vehicles that hold up well, vehicles that don't need a lot of expensive repairs and maintenance in the long run. And the Outback, at least in my experience, it's been phenomenal. I've really enjoyed driving these. I've actually driven a few dozen Outbacks on my channel, so there's plenty of other videos if you want to see some of those later on. But guys, drive the competition. Don't just take my word for it. Go figure it out for yourself. Make sure the numbers work. Make sure you're happy with it and it works for you and your family or your dogs or whatever your situation might be. Drive the competition, even the vehicles that you thought you might not like. And if that confirms that this is the right vehicle for you, then you're going to be a little bit happier in the long run, I'd imagine. Remember, Twin Falls Subaru will ship to you if you're interested, and everything is below MSRP. Otherwise, if you got anything out of this video, please consider liking this video. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope to see you again on the next one. Until then, take care.